Hi everyone, welcome to Solar Integrations. Um, in today's video, I want to talk a little bit about connecting your generator to your inverter. It's something which I know a lot of people have issues with on the forums and on the Facebook groups. And there are a few things which you can do to make it uh, easier and that you need to check are in place before your inverter will connect to your generator and, and allow you to pull a load from it. And um, I'd just like to go over my experiences with it and what worked for me um, and uh, some of the things to check. If you've got any other suggestions, I'd appreciate comments uh, in the comment section. And um, if you're not subscribed and you find this type of content useful, um, please like and subscribe. It does help me a lot. Um, I'm going to be talking about the day and the SunSync inverters today. So um, these are my experiences and um, I look forward to seeing you after the break. There are two ways you can connect your uh, generator. Um, the preferred method is using the gen port or the auxiliary port on the inverter and there are a number of reasons for this. Um, first of all, it is um, much easier to restrict the amount of power being pulled from the generator. Um, you set that in your auxiliary port settings. You can just set the maximum load. Um, the second reason is that it ramps up the load on the generator a lot more gradually than um, the, the grid port does. And um, finally, um, the frequency and voltage um, uh, allowed frequencies and voltage is much wider on the gen port than it is on the grid port. So it's a lot more uh, restricted on the, on the grid port. And you may find that you might have to open up those settings a bit um, if you're going to use your grid port with a transfer switch. So first prize is connect the generator to the, the gen port or the auxiliary port and um, set it up that way. And uh, I would only go through the with a transfer switch on the grid port if you absolutely have to. So these are the settings that I use for my gen port attached uh, generator. And um, I'm going to be, I'll show you what, what those settings are. And then there's going to be a short video on what it looks like when the generator connects to the inverter and um, what you can check for on there. And then I'll be following that up with a number of things that you can do if your generator is not connecting to your inverter and what could be causing that. So these are the settings on my system work mode. As you can see, I don't have any of the grid charge uh, boxes ticked. Um, I assume that's for if you want to have the ATS port kicking in. Um, on my battery settings uh, menu, I've got a gen charge, gen signal, and gen force boxes ticked. My understanding is that the gen force box... Um, sets the generator to charge or sets the inverter to charge from the generator no matter what the work mode settings are so you don't need to go and tick all the boxes on the work mode settings first of all um, if you go over here and you go to gen port use you can set your uh, maximum load to be put onto the generator over there um, mine set for 3000 watts i've got a 5.5 KVA generator and it seems to be relatively happy at 3000 watts. Um, if we click on the generator, it'll tell us what load we're pulling and what the frequency is. Um, I'm going to start the generator now and then you guys will be able to see how that changes. Um, just stand by. Okay, so you can hear my generator has started. Um, if I come out of here, if I go back over here, there we can see I've got it set quite high at 53 hertz. Um, 
and you'll hear in a few moments the uh, you'll hear the relay click in and it'll start applying load on the generator that l1 voltage is the voltage that's coming from my generator as well and i've deliberately set that frequency up quite high there it's starting to apply load you can see that now drops down to 50 hertz okay and you can see um, at the top over there I'm pulling three kilowatts from my generator so if your generator is not connecting to the inverter for some reason there are a number of things that you can check the first thing you want to check um, is that you have a earth neutral bond um, if you don't know what I'm talking about I do have a video on it I'll put a link through to that um, because your your uh, inverter will not connect to the generator if it has a floating neutral um, so that's the first thing which you want to check so the next thing we want to check is the frequency and the voltage that our generator is supplying the inverter um, your voltage needs to be at 230 volts we can check that either with a multimeter or you can um, have a look at the generator screen on your uh, inverter um, you click on the generator and it'll show you the voltage being supplied it'll also show you the frequency that can that is being supplied there and um, you can also measure that with a multimeter um, if your frequency is um, too low you can adjust it there is a um, throttle linkage on the generators that you can adjust and um, if you um, adjust that up a bit that's a good idea so um, on my generator you'll see in the, my video um, I've got my generator set at 53 Hertz uh, when the load gets applied um, that drops down to just over 50 Hertz and um, if you've got the generator connected to your gen port um, it does allow you uh, more leeway as far as the allowed frequencies are concerned before it will disconnect um, and um, my suggestion is uh, put it up put it up a little set that frequency up a little bit um, by screwing in the the throttle screw and uh, until you get to about 53 hertz and then when load gets applied it'll drop down a bit I hope you found my video useful in getting your inverter to connect to your generator. Um, if you have, please remember to like and subscribe. It does help my channel. And um, I'm always looking for uh, new ideas. So uh, if you've got anything else you would like to see, please let me know in comments.